I got the phone call and he was crying, he was upset. And I said, can you tell me about it? And he said it very strong. He says, I will tell you once and I won't tell you again and don't ask any questions. So Steve grabbed the other phone and we listened to what had happened that day. We were on a, uh, a large battalion operation where we were pretty much the main effort. It's kind of one of those nights where it wasn't totally dark, but it was, it was getting dark. The train was in such a case where we had to walk pretty much ducks in a row. There was times we were on all, all fours crawling up, our hands and knees crawling up the train, trying to get into position. We knew they wanted to fight. We knew we were in uncharted territory, somewhere we, we, we hadn't been. Sergeant Brennan, my team leader, he got probably about 10 to 15 meters into the clearing, and we heard what appeared to be a pop shot at the time. It was just a single shot. Probably about a half second, second later, it didn't even take long. The, uh, the whole 12 opened up on us. First platoon being the lead platoon out, walked right into an L-shaped ambush. Mm. So close that the assets flying above couldn't distinguish between who was bad and who was good. I remember our squad leader, he'd taken a bullet right through his helmet. It just barely grazed his skin. I got shot in the stomach. And then I also heard my team leader, uh, Sergeant Brennan, say that he'd been hit. I mean, there were RPGs, PKMs. Stick around in the helmet and got shot in the leg. Everybody in that first squad was, was just shot. Sergeant Junta sees these guys getting hit in front of him and immediately starts, you know, bounding up to their positions after being shot twice in the chest. He ran past us. I didn't know where he went. I didn't know why he went. He fought through the initial wall of lead. They were dragging Sergeant Brennan away at that point. He ran through the ambush, engaged three individuals that were running off with Sergeant Brennan's body. I mean, they were taking on, they were trying to grab his friend, and he went out there, and he went after him. And it made perfect sense why he did that. From what we know, he killed at least one of the enemy, grabs Sergeant Brennan, makes sure that he's okay, and then drives him back over to the rest of the platoon that's still being engaged in, in combat with the enemy. When I talked to Sergeant Junta, you know, one-on-one -on -one later on, it was, it was more or less like, hey man, I, I don't know how you did it, but why did you do it? He was saying it through anger and through lots of sadness. You could tell at the moment that he was telling us he was actually reliving it. I saw two people carrying one person, kind of by the hands and by the feet. But as I ran closer, I kind of realized uh, more of what was actually going on and it was two ACM carrying Sergeant Brennan. So I, I just started shooting. I mean, that, that's what we do. And I grabbed Sergeant Brennan and dragged him back a little bit, but he was still alive and he was talking. He just was talking about how his face hurt and he was shot in his legs and he was shot in his arms. Just tried to reassure him, you know, everything's gonna be okay, everything's fine. The foundation of, of, of this family, this, this, this tight-knit group that was forged together in the blast furnace of combat, he felt like any number of those guys would have done the same thing for him. I didn't run on to do anything heroic. I ran on to go fight next to my brother, to go fight next to my friend who I already served one tour in Afghanistan with who we live in the same barracks building for the last four years. And he probably would have felt worse if he hadn't done it than he did, you know, having to go through there and live through that, that painstaking event and, and, and see his friend basically die. They took Josh up on the helicopter and then they had a long walk back. And I don't know if it was when they got back or the following day they, they were told that they lost Josh. And what Sal had told us on that phone call he says, he was alive, Mom. When they took him up, he was alive. I expected to find him alive when I got back. And um, that was hard for him. Um, we've not talked to him again about that day. You know, we, we vowed that we wouldn't, we wouldn't ask him questions. So um, we have his version that he told us through the tears and the emotions. And then we hear the news through everybody else, what that looked like. It started sounding like some story I had heard about or read about in World War I or World War II with Audie Murphy. You don't hear about single individuals taking on the responsibility to lead their squad when they're a specialist, treat their squad leader 
after they've been shot three times. And then third, go repatriate their best friend from behind enemy lines that's being dragged away by the enemy. And then to run back into the kill zone to start treating his men. I don't know anybody doing that on their own. I wouldn't say we were heroes. I would say definitely he was. I would definitely say he was a hero that night. No matter what happens for the rest of my life, I'll always know that I was around the great ones, you know? I remember the friends I lost every day, regardless of any medal. That medal puts me in a position where I'm able to tell the world about how great Sergeant Brennan, Specialist Mendoza are, and to, to tell the story of the men that are around me. He is a low-key guy, a humble guy, uh, and he doesn't seek the limelight. And he'll tell you that he didn't do anything special, that he was just doing his job, that any of his brothers in the unit would do the same thing. All these, these spotlights right now are on me, but I wasn't there, I wasn't the only one there that night. I wasn't, I've never gone to battle alone. I've never been in a, a gunfight alone. That's why Salvatore Junta risked his life for his fellow soldiers, because they would risk their lives for him. That's what fueled his bravery. Not just the urgent impulse to have their backs, but the absolute confidence that they had his. And I hope with all these years I can make that apparent to the world that these people go out there and do this every single day, year after year, deployment after deployment, and it's taxing, but there is that great of people in our country willing to do this. And I hope that if I got the spotlights on me, that I can show the world that there is amazing people out there.